At the Zhuhai Air Show, when China unveiled its GDF 600 hypersonic mothership model, its propaganda machine immediately went into overdrive. However, just as this was happening, India made a surprise announcement that it had successfully tested the LRHM long-range hypersonic missile. The missile reached speeds of Mach 6, had a range of 1,500 kilometers, and could carry a 350 kilogram warhead, including tactical nuclear warheads. Even more impressively, it could perform terminal phase maneuvering, making it virtually impossible to intercept. In contrast, China's GDF 600 was just a lonely, cold plastic model, which doesn't hold a candle to India's real functioning missile. Indian media soon revealed more details, explaining that the LRHM is powered by a scramjet engine, and demonstrated the stealth of a Himalayan snow leopard and the maneuverability of an acrobat. It's capable of penetrating air defenses by flying at low altitudes and could easily overwhelm current systems. India's hypersonic missile development is the result of years of work, starting with the BrahMos supersonic cruise missile and extending to its HSTDV hypersonic vehicle. India achieved significant progress in 2020 when they successfully tested the HSTDV, reaching Mach 6.5 for over 20 seconds at altitudes above 30 kilometers. These tests provided valuable data for future hypersonic cruise missiles. India's decision to test the missile in the Bay of Bengal is also significant. In recent years, tensions in the Indo-Pacific have been high, with China expanding its naval influence in the South China Sea and the Indian Ocean. The Indian Ocean is considered India's backyard. By developing a missile with a 1,500-kilometer range and terminal phase maneuverability, India is sending a clear message to China's naval fleet, warning them not to freely dominate the region. If India deploys such missiles in the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, Chinese naval forces entering the Indian Ocean will have to deal with the Snow Leopard missiles, potentially targeting them from above. Some Indian media even proclaimed, once these missiles are stationed along the Indian Ocean and land borders, every move by China will be within our strike range. India's defense minister called the test a historic moment and expressed confidence that India is now able to compete with China on equal terms. This was a direct challenge, signaling that India is no longer a laughingstock but a formidable competitor with real military capabilities. India also benefits from alliances. Technology exchanges and possibly support from the U.S. and Japan, shifting the balance of power in the region. China's ambitions in the Indian Ocean now face greater challenges. This bold move by India has not only excited the public in India, but also received support from anti-China factions abroad. Many Western media outlets, which have long criticized China's behavior in the South China Sea and Indo-Pacific region, see India's hypersonic missile as a game changer. Countries like the U.S., Japan, and Australia have been hoping for someone to challenge China, and now they finally have a capable opponent in India. This situation has left many Chinese netizens furious. Many have flooded online. Forums with criticisms suggesting that India must have stolen technology from the U.S. or that this missile is just a prototype and not ready for combat. Some have even claimed that China's missiles can easily intercept the LRHM. These arguments reveal a reluctance to accept that India has developed a legitimate long-range hypersonic missile. For many, the idea that India can't do it is deeply ingrained in their mindset. The most bizarre criticism was over a missile launch tube cap visible in a video released by India. Some claimed it was a sign of poor quality and that the missile was carelessly constructed. However, the missile hit its target perfectly, and all flight data indicated it was functioning normally. Despite this, critics focused on the cap as if it were a major issue. This overblown criticism seems absurd, especially when other countries' missile tests often have similar minor issues that go unpublicized. Ironically, India released this video without any modifications, only to be mocked for it. While China is known for its heavy editing of such content. Some so-called military experts have stubbornly argued that India's supersonic missile is simply a modified version of its earlier Agni P rocket, with added wings and a glider. 
turning it into a hypersonic missile. On the surface, this argument may seem plausible, but in reality, it's a complete misunderstanding. The biggest challenges in developing hypersonic weapons are material selection, aerodynamic design, heat protection, and ensuring stable engine combustions at speeds above Mach 6. If any of these elements fail, the missile either won't launch or will disintegrate mid-flight. Clearly, India has spent years accumulating technological expertise, and success in such a complex field isn't a matter of blindly modifying parts. Even if India did use existing technologies, achieving the missile's acceleration and maneuverability is still a significant technical accomplishment. So, rather than saying it's copying, it's more accurate to say that India's researchers have skillfully leveraged mature technologies, rapidly pushing them to the point of operational readiness. In contrast, China's GDF-600 is still just a model, with no clear timeline for its actual deployment. The real embarrassment for China lies in the fact that its military air defense systems have never truly been tested against hypersonic missiles. India's recent test, where the LRHM missile demonstrated its ability to fly at low altitudes, maneuver in the terminal phase, and possibly even target ships, presents a significant challenge to any existing air defense system. Looking at the situation in Ukraine, where Russia has deployed its Kinjal hypersonic missile, Ukraine has occasionally aimed to intercept some incoming missiles with Patriot systems. But such interceptions are extremely difficult and often rely on luck. If the target is a missile like India's LRHM, which combines speed, maneuverability, and potential stealth, and is also deployed covertly, can any air defense system reliably intercept it? It's doubtful. And China's Hongqi defense systems in particular are far from proven in this regard. These absurd online jokes and rumors actually reflect the CCP's double standards in propaganda. The CCP never talks about its own failures, and even when it comes to imitation and plagiarism, it presents it as an independent innovation. However, when it comes to the progress of other countries, it relentlessly slanders them, claiming they must have stolen it, there's no way they could do it so quickly. The problem is, the CCP has been copying Russian and American technologies for many years, and in the past, it used reverse engineering to develop a lot of counterfeit equipment. If it were to be honest, the CCP has no qualifications to mock others. A few years ago, they were boasting about the Dongfang 17 being invincible. But what about now? It has already been surpassed by the fast-paced breakthroughs of countries like the US and India. Not to mention that they constantly claim to be leading the world, but they can't even independently manufacture advanced chips. The CCP media always blackens India, and behind this is their deep fear of India's rise. India is the world's most populous country, with enormous human capital and overseas technological resources, along with the potential for economic vitality under a democratic system. India is now putting its foot on the gas, leveraging cooperation with countries like the US and Japan to rapidly develop space and military technologies. Meanwhile, the CCP, due to ideological and international political factors, is increasingly being blocked by the West, unable to make breakthroughs in key technologies and internally focused on common prosperity and internal circulation. Once India truly gains a foothold and becomes a high-tech powerhouse closely aligned with the US and Europe, the threat to the CCP will be much greater than that from neighboring Russia. If India can continue to successfully test fire its hypersonic missiles multiple times and begin small-scale deployment within the next year or two, once the Indian Navy or Army places these hypersonic weapons in key maritime or border areas, a new variable will emerge in the India-China power balance. This variable may not immediately lead to conflict, but will likely affect negotiations and dealings between the two nations in the region, giving India a stronger bargaining position. In the more extreme case, if India, with covert technological support from the US, Japan, and even European countries, further improves its hypersonic cruise missiles and tactical nuclear strike capabilities, the geopolitical landscape in Asia will undoubtedly undergo a massive change. The CCP's sour grapes mentality and their tendency to amplify even the slightest weakness in others exposes the moral decay and twisted mindset of the CCP. 
While India also highlights its achievements, at least in the case of the LRHM test, they provided clear data on speed, range, and payload, and even released video footage showing a relatively high level of transparency. In contrast, the CCP continuously emphasizes how world-leading it is, refusing to acknowledge its own shortcomings, and rarely releasing real test data for international experts to verify. On the other hand, India has already successfully launched multiple rockets, sending probes to the moon and Mars, accumulating a solid foundation in space technology. And now it's making strides in hypersonic missile technology. The CCP is well aware of this, which is why they are so eager to label India with all kinds of negative tags. Returning to the LRHM test, from a technical standpoint, it's not like the CCP's hypersonic missile, which pursues high-end scramjet engines. India has been pragmatic. Although they tried scramjet engines in the HSTDV project, they realized that achieving maturity in a short term was difficult. So they decided to first use a mature rocket engine to send the missile to high altitudes. Then they use a rocket scramjet engine to achieve a speed of Mach six with excellent terminal maneuvering capabilities, along. With a powerful warhead and low altitude penetration, in terms of practical combat, this is already enough to be highly intimidating. Once scramjet engines mature, they can upgrade the missile to Mach seven, eight, or even higher speeds. This strategy significantly shortens the development cycle, allowing India to take the lead in hypersonic weapons and gain real-world benefits that can effectively deter the CCP. Looking at China, the Dongfeng-17 wave-riding hypersonic missile, launched a few years ago, was touted as the world's first hypersonic glide missile in service. But facing the American space-based interception system and glide-phased interceptors, its ability to penetrate in the future looks worrying. The Changjian 100 (CJ 100), unveiled at the 2019 military parade, is believed to be China's hypersonic cruise missile (HCM), but its test records and deployment status remain unclear. As for the DFZF, also known as the WZ8, a high-altitude reconnaissance UAV launched by the Dongfang 17. While it is said to have a strong gliding and maneuvering capabilities within the atmosphere, its mass production and deployment status are similarly opaque. In other words, the actual combat effectiveness of these three hypersonic weapons is highly uncertain. Indeed, while the Chinese military's Dongfang 17 can reach speeds of up to Mach 10, it's not necessarily easier to intercept than India's missile, which reaches Mach 6. It's not just speed that determines how hard a missile is to intercept. Sometimes higher speed, combined with poor maneuverability, can make it easier to intercept. While lower speed missiles with superior evasion tactics can be much harder to intercept. Moreover, the high speed of the Dongfeng 17 can sometimes be a disadvantage because it has to re-enter the atmosphere before striking. Unlike India's missile, which, while slower, stays within the atmosphere for its entire flight, following a shorter trajectory. This means that while attacking equally distant targets, the Dongfeng 17 might take longer than India's missile to reach its target. Furthermore, India will likely purchase advanced U.S. air defense systems in the future, which will likely be much better than China's air defense systems. In this case, India's defense shield will be much stronger, while China's will be comparably weaker. This imbalance will make it difficult to claim that China's Dongfeng 17 would necessarily prevail in real combat against India's missile. As for China's Dongfeng 21D and Dongfeng 26, which are claimed to be aircraft carrier killers, they are essentially medium-range ballistic missiles. While they theoretically have some maneuverability in the terminal phase, the U.S. standard missile three can already intercept them outside the atmosphere. The GDF 600, showcased at the Zhuhai Air Show, is a hypersonic platform capable of launching a variety of munitions. Including drones, cruise missiles, and subsonic missiles. However, it is still just a model, and no information has been released regarding any successful test flights. In previous years, they claim to have tested scramjet engines, but no credible data or actual test footage has ever been released. Occasionally, there are blurry photos, but these have been widely questioned by netizens as being edited or staged. What does this all mean? It means that India's breakthrough in hypersonic technology has begun to challenge the CCP's narrative of absolute superiority, and signals that a larger geopolitical struggle is about to unfold. India, with its democratic values and ties to the West, is likely to cooperate closer with the West in terms of military technology. This is exactly what the CCP fears. 
losing the opportunity for equal technological exchanges with the outside world and losing control over public opinion. If a real conflict breaks out, China will not only face the U.S., but also India, along with many other countries allied with India. Meanwhile, China's own economic situation isn't looking so optimistic, with local debt, the real estate crisis, and rising unemployment slowly tearing away at the CCP's illusion of prosperity. On the battlefield, it's uncertain whether the CCP will be able to assert its dominance. From a strategic perspective, if India continues to conduct further technological tests and iterations, revealing more details like precise hit rates, warhead types, multi-platform launch capabilities, and methods to evade radar warning, this would be even worse news for China. It would mean that India isn't just aiming to develop a concept missile, but is truly aiming to create mature, long-range hypersonic strike capability. If India successfully develops a truly mobile launch platform, even deploying it into a mountainous area, jungles, or naval vessels, then China's aircraft carriers won't be the only ones at risk. The entire western region of China and Pakistan might face sleepless nights. The balance of power in South Asia and the Indo-Pacific could undergo a seismic shift, and China's western cities or military bases may find themselves in jeopardy in a real conflict. The fact that the LRA SHM can achieve a speed of Mach 6, complete terminal maneuvers, and execute precise strikes at ranges of over 1,500 kilometers or even farther proves that India has entered the hypersonic missile club. It's no longer just the domain of China, the U.S., and Russia, nor is it a rare skill possessed by only a few powerhouse nations. Moreover, India could upgrade this missile to a cruise variant, an anti-ship version, or integrate it with projects like BrahMos-2. Once a comprehensive multi-layered hypersonic strike force is formed, no one in South Asia or the Indo-Pacific region will dare to underestimate India's military power. India's urgency to develop hypersonic weapons is also inspired by the real-world effects of hypersonic missiles in the Russia-Ukraine conflict. Although the Russian Zircon missile may not have changed the course of the war, it has certainly caused significant headaches for Ukrainian and NATO air defense systems in terms of penetration capabilities. Additionally, the ongoing border tensions between India and China create a potential for conflict, and if India can gain the upper hand by deploying hypersonic weapons first, it could pressure China into making concessions in both the border region and the Indian Ocean, making it more difficult for Chinese aircraft carriers to operate freely there. At the same time, India is applying pressure on Pakistan. Given the long-standing tension between India and Pakistan, the possession of hypersonic weapons that are difficult to intercept could give India the edge on the Western Front. The public outcry following India's LRHM missile test is not just about the missile itself. It's a reflection of India's rising technological strength and China's double standards in its propaganda. The indignant and dismissive comments from Chinese netizens seem more like an expression of panic and an unwillingness to accept the reality. No matter how much they criticize or make excuses, they can't hide the impressive achievement that India has delivered at this moment. India's shocking hypersonic missile test not only showcased its technological advancements to the international community, but also served as a wake-up call for those who underestimated them. The global military technology competition is not a monopoly of a few nations. Any country with enough determination, resources, and international cooperation can achieve breakthroughs in the defense industry. Undoubtedly, this represents a major turnaround in India's national image. True strength is more convincing than slogans and propaganda, and India has now definitively proven this point. As the saying goes, running fast doesn't necessarily mean running far, and loud proclamations don't necessarily lead to powerful results. The outcome of this technological race won't be determined by slogans or model displays. The public slap in the face that China received from India at the Zhuhai Air Show may just be the beginning. The arms race surrounding hypersonic weapons is only going to intensify, and the key test for China will be whether it can match India. From what we can see now, China's position doesn't look strong. The sting from the slap in the face is still simmering, while India is already prepping for its next leap forward in technology. China's bluster will ultimately be exposed step by step in the face of reality.